I have props here now. I want to make this like a morning zoo podcast. Yeah. Oh my god, that would be. We have got to do that. We've got to get like Disney related <laughs> noisemakers. I got emoji blitz. That Not emoji blitz. Did they Never any, emoji uh, blitz. Have they done any uh, no things yet? Not really? yet. Maybe they're not going to. Maybe. Well, yeah. I think the the diamond box ends tomorrow with um, the frozen character, like Olaf and whoever. So I think maybe in the next couple of days we might see something new. Right. So we're talking about emoji blitz again. I have to say, hi Sean. It's just, I know it's his favorite part. Yes, it is. He loves Disney emoji blitz. He part. does. He does. Tells us all the time. Writes us emails. Tells us. That's right. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Chris. How are you? Oh, just wonderful. You know awesome. what's you know what's great about this time of year is that uh, there's so much free time, so yes. few things to do. Absolutely. So many. Uh, so so few events to go to. Right. You um, can sit down and, and enjoy the Christmas specials on TV. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm just sit and look at the Christmas tree and sip a hot. A cup of hot cocoa. Yeah, every everybody's at work, so it's easy to get things done. Right, right. Um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time uh, planned to take off, so it's not like I've got a crunch to get a whole bunch of things done before uh, before the end of the year, and uh, you know, all the goals that we have set for that. So it's I love this time of year. It's a, yeah, it's so and easy. you have a you have a quiet uh, Christmas uh, week plan, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yep. Just gonna be. Uh, I think it's just me. I think it's just gonna be really by myself. Yeah, man, that that's uh, that's pretty be cool. Nice. Yeah, for an introvert like me, that sounds uh, sounds nice. That does sound nice. <laughs> so, and to, to our be absolutely nothing. Like that. <laughs> to our audience, we're recording this on December fourteenth, twenty sixteen. The and greatest you know how year I know ever. That, by the way, you know how I know the date. How do you know the date? Because we have thirty seven advent calendars in our house. I don't know about your house. <laughs> these we have these things. It started like like you know, a couple. Uh, like, I think last year. I think it might have been the first time that you know our oldest son was like we we talked about advent calendars and like that. This year, I think every wall in our house we have a different advent calendar, and so at bedtime it is a uh, it takes an hour and a half to get through all the all the calendars. <laughs> we we have three, and we actually have one less than last year or the last few years because we've been getting the Lego advent calendar. Yeah, I just learned about that this week. And I'm like, oh, if, really? If we didn't have, I didn't know they had. If I'm like, if we didn't have, if we were, <laughs> if we weren't, if we didn't have this embarrassment of riches of the various calendars we have. Um, so it's it's actually it's it's cool, but this year it's like it's it's almost like a repeat. Like I, I was really okay. So they have a Star Wars advent calendar. They have uh, their Lego City advent calendar, and they have the Lego Friends, like right. the more girlish uh, advent calendars. Right. And we've gotten the Star Wars and the City ones. Um, and I was I I was so close to getting the Friends one this year, just because it was different. Because well, it seems like a, they're repeating a lot of the the Lego um, for the other two. And I thought you took at the, hang on. I thought you took issue with the the whole Friends line of of Lego products. No? Well, it was something different. Okay. I mean, you can yeah. you can use it in the rest of your Lego. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And no, I don't. I mean, I don't really take issue with it. It's just uh, <laughs> I don't know why we have to have a separate girls' line for. Uh, I beg to differ. I heard a half an hour rant about that from you one day, but no, no, that's okay. We don't we don't have to include it here. I have no idea. Where to start. So, do you have the Star Wars one? So, which one do you have? Um, we have, have none this year. Oh, no. um, so my disappointment was I really thought uh, we would be doing the Star Wars one because I, I figured after Episode Seven coming out last year it would be right. heavily The Force Awakens, yeah, and it's not. It's it's basically the the first six movies. Like I don't think they have anything from. Well, hang on. Um, Maybe I don't understand what this product is. It would is it a one time use thing? What is this thing? I figured it was something you just use. Like we have a. Like I don't know, Santa's yeah. house gingerbread. Yeah, no, no, no. Every year they, they come out with a new one. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the last one, you know, the <clears throat> on December twenty fourth or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's always like uh, one year it was um, a snowman R two D two, so it's all white R two D two. Okay. Um, then like another year was uh, Darth Vader as Santa. Well, this year it's uh, like a white Chewbacca. With his lanyard is in red and green, <laughs> okay. um, so it's it's different every year. But but that's the only really super duper special one. The rest of them are you know it's like X wings and you know little bitty ones. You know little bitty X wings and um, uh, Tie fighters and things like that. But it's not they didn't do any like there's no 
BB-8. There's no, there's no, hmm. you know, nothing. That's from really Force surprising. Awakens. Yeah. I know. That's why I was so disappointed. So uh, you know what? I'm I'm speaking about these things, and I don't really know about them. So they're they're like a, it looks like I'm looking at them now. They're like a cardboard thing, and you pop them open. Yeah, it's just a cardboard box. It's a Lego yeah. cardboard box, and but they have it's, yeah, it's perforated. Um, for all, so the one of the sides like oh, lays okay. down. Oh, okay. Um, and you can use it at the you know the bottom as a like a little playset. Oh, see, I thought I thought it was a, like the whole thing was a Lego like. I don't know what I would. Oh no no no! It's not a full set. No, yeah, it's, that's you don't know what you're getting. It's a little, a little gift every day. Oh well, that's kind of neat. It's very neat. I wish I'd known about this a month ago. Thanks a lot. <sighs> oh well, you know, next year I'll have 38 advent calendars. <laughs> we did. We did get a uh, an R2D2. Uh, uh, it's like a big fabric one that you like put up on the wall or something. I like that. Kind of cool. Yeah. That is cool. Right. What do you have marking the the days? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I don't think anything, Glenn. Why do you ask? Oh, yeah, just curious. <laughs> so, yeah, all right. So, <laughs> you know, my wife posted the picture of the uh, of the thing on Facebook, and we're like, but you know, we don't really, we're not really putting anything in the little pockets because you know, I, I think the way they advertise it is you put a little piece of candy or whatever in each one. And we, you know, it's not really after. But uh, this uh, this friend of mine suggested you know she get a little C three PO and you know have him mark the different days and so that's what we're doing and you know it was a good idea so thanks Glenn was it was it a hit with the family did, yeah did Evan yeah, think it was, it was great greatest? yeah Uncle Glenn is a genius yeah, see yep, yep I know Daddy why didn't you think of that dummy it's <laughs> pretty much what I got <laughs> say that to myself. Yeah, it's a good idea. So, yeah, I don't, uh, we like the calendars. Cool. We also, do you have any other, like, uh, and it's not the on the topic right now, but um, you know, we're developing these traditions, too. Like, uh, uh, my wife makes this, uh, like, chain. It's like a like a construction mm. paper chain. Mm-hmm. So every day you cut a link off. And uh, that's kind of cool, too, because you can actually that see, cool. like, the, you, you know, get that visceral. You can see, my gosh, it's getting kind of, like, we looked at it today and went, holy cow, there are many <laughs> links left there. <laughs> right. We better get we, moving. We we used to do as kids. Uh, my my sister and I used to do that, um, and mm-hmm. not every year, but I, I do remember distinctly doing it a couple of years. And uh, but we do we have done it with trips, like a countdown for a trip. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Uh, but we're not. No, I I think because we have the three existing calendars, I think we're all like, okay, we we kind of know we're yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> we we're all set on the, the links on the dates. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a, it's a different thing. Yeah. Hmm, cool. Well, I I do you know despite all the noise and mayhem, I do like this time of year. Of Fun course. Stuff. Yep. I love going to the parks this time of year. Neat things. Speaking of which. Oh yeah. Chris, yeah. have you been to the parks lately? <laughs> Wait, have you come up with any theme music for you know Chris? Chris goes and does something. <laughs> no, but you know what? You you're really the musician. Something. I think we need some original music, and no, I think you to... need to come up with something, and I'll we'll put <laughs> it in. It needs to be like you know. Somebody's going walking, kind of music. Like you got like this little jaunty kind of, <laughs> <laughs> like going out. We're packing up. We're going out. You know, <sighs> Chris goes to a thing because Glenn never goes to Disney. No, Glenn and, doesn't anymore. go to Disney. I'm sorry. Well, he will soon, right? Next month. Next month, yeah. Next month, you're gonna uh, you're gonna have a night of Take a, uh, yeah. photography and stuff, right? That's right. Cool. That's right. Yeah, we went. I gotta tell you. I don't know. I think I think there's something there's something in the stars with me and the Magic Kingdom. We're just not. Uh, I don't know. Something something crazy. Just crazy. We we just don't get along. I don't know what it is. But um, well, yeah, could it could it happen. be because you went on a beautiful day and everybody wanted to get out and get out there? Yeah. So it started like a week before, and we we figured, all right, we're gonna go. I don't even know where to start with this story. So we're mm-hmm. we're go- we're gonna go because we hadn't been in the Magic Kingdom yet, Christmas time, and mm-hmm. hadn't seen you know um, all the decorations and stuff. Sure. So we're trying to fit that in, and like a week before, I'm like, okay, let me go and do the the horrible fast pass thing, and uh, you know, plan out my whole day exactly where I'm going to be at at every moment. And uh, I tried to get some things. I noticed there was uh, it was. A lot of stuff was missing already, like things mm-hmm. just not available, uh, especially things like Peter Pan, which often go first, right? But but it yeah. seemed like even more so than a regular thing. 
which is surprising to me because I mean, obviously the the week of Christmas is just crazy, and we, mm-hmm. we don't we don't go then. But usually we can go up until about you know the uh, I don't know eighteen, nineteen, twenty in that range. It's not so bad. Uh, so it was a little surprising in that, but um, you know the weather is nice this time of year. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a what day was it? Saturday? It was a Saturday. I think so. Yeah. And uh, so we said, let's go take a ride and let's go do it. And because um, we figured we're really there to see decorations. We even told uh, the kid we're, we're there to see mostly decorations. Probably not going to go on a lot of rides. So, you know, yeah, set your expectations accordingly. So mm-hmm. we went out there. And before we even got there, it's like uh, all the signs were there that I should just turn around and go home. But, mm-hmm. of course, you know, once you're locked in, you, you got to keep going right now. That yeah. There's a family expectation. So, number one, they... Uh, uh, we, we take a new way to the Magic Kingdom now because they have that new um, widened entrance um, uh, from the back of the Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, for those who might know, that you go down Reams Road and then there's like a big cast member parking lot. Uh, but there's a, there's a light there you can turn. You can kind of wind your way through uh, a, a short um, couple of turns and you get on... I don't remember its exact name. Grand Flirting Way or Flirting Way, something like that. And it's the road that goes along the the west side of the Grand Floridian, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And so we've learned, at least from, based on where we live, that that's a pretty easy route for us to take. So we go that way, and uh, except we find out that the Floridian Way is closed for reasons un, unknown to anyone. Really? So, yeah, so we got to go wind our way all the way around, uh, which wouldn't have been so bad, except we got, once we got past sort of that backstage area, mm-hmm. we sat in bumper-to-bumper traffic for 40 minutes. It took what? us to to get uh, and just sort of crept along and so we had to go up through the TTC and you know back around um, mm-hmm. uh, which by the way there's a there's a big loophole in the in the in the parking in the toll booth thing are you are you aware of this loophole that, that I can't believe they leave open <clears throat> um, and I probably shouldn't say because I, I know of more a people loophole know. yeah well anyway there is a loophole there is there is a legal way um, to to um, to go from, I don't even know what road that is, uh, by the gas station, essentially, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and right before the toll booth, there's like a little turnaround. It's a little tiny road. Um, it's not. It's a, it's a regular road, so it doesn't seem illegal to use, even though they have a sign there that says, Magic Kingdom, go this way, through the toll booth, where you give us money. Um, but this way, you can kind of go through and you avoid that. Now, I don't feel guilty about using it myself because we're annual pass holders and our parking's included anyway, so I figured, what's the harm? Mm-hmm. So anyway, it took us 40 minutes to finally get there, and the parking lot is jammed all the way to the back. And just like all the sign, you know, when you when you go to the park and you go, oh, my gosh, this place is going to be crowded. And um, so it uh, it kind of was. So we, we get to the, <laughs> the TTC, and uh, it wasn't so bad there. I mean, it wasn't like unusually crowded getting on the monorail there when we got on there. But, Glenn, when we got to the, the gates, when we got to the Magic Kingdom finally, mm-hmm. it, it, was, it was packed like it was Christmas Day. I, I don't know, obviously, I don't know what attendance numbers were or anything, but just the, the line to get through the turnstiles went from uh, the, the you know, virtual turnstiles, went from, from them all the way back to the bag check and, like, wrapped around and things. It was just like mayhem. I, I yeah. sent you some pictures you can you share, with, share with the folks if you like. But I don't think I've ever, other than like Christmas Day, like like on a holiday or Easter. We, I don't think we've ever been there on Christmas Day, but we've been there on Easter, which is um, just as bad, I think. Pretty close. And it, it was like that. And it was, uh, and, and it's, you know, it's kind of fun. I don't know if anybody else does this. It's kind of fun to look at the faces on the cast members because I like to try and see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. I like to try and see, and I don't know why I care because it doesn't change any facts. I'm trying to see. Is it expected it would be this normal, or is mm. this like something's happened and like everybody's confused? Um, and the cast members look like they had that the like eyes wide open. They're like, "What the <laughs> something is going on here?" And uh, I even uh, I said to one of them, just you know, because I'm an I'm an old you know old dad kind of guy, so I gotta say these kind of things. I'm like, huh, "Pretty busy day, huh?" And the cast member looked at me with these wide eyes and just like. You have no idea. So I'm like, okay, it's not just me. It's not just like mm-hmm. I don't know what's happening here. Like this caught off. This this caught off the Disney people, yeah. and it's just like everybody got there all at once. Um, so I, I have theories. I mean, the reason we were going that day was because you know we are. They have this new pass. The, these new annual passes. I think this year is the first year they did it, where 
they have blackout dates, but only during holidays. Mm-hmm. You know, previously, the bla- they had blackout date annual passes, but it also blacked out the summer, and we never got those because we still do go in the summer. Right. But these were like, well, we can afford not to go um, for like basically a week and a half in December, and then a, a week in you know around Easter, spring break time, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. that is. You know, we we generally wouldn't go those times anyway because you know they're so crowded. But so we were trying to get one visit in before. You know, before that kicked in, but I think so was everybody else. I think this was I, my hunch is that the way they marketed this pass and uh, kind of it fit in as sort of like middle tier pass. I think mm-hmm. everybody decided to do that, and of course the weather was great. Yeah. Uh, so it seemed, and for whatever reason, we got there about three o'clock, um, and it seemed like just it seemed like everybody just got there at the same time, and you know, just was a, whatever. There was this mass, <laughs> this mass synchronization of everybody's plans. But as I've said to other people many times, I can take two things, at, or one of two things at Disney. I can take crowds or I can take uh, heat, um, mm-hmm. but I can't take both. So at least this was one of those. It was, it was crowd, but no heat. So it That's was actually nice. nice. It was nice at first. You know, it was crowded, but okay. It was, it was manageable. Right. We were, we were there to pretty much just see the decorations and go around anyway. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy crowded, um, but uh, it, it didn't start off so bad. So, you know, we, uh, I can't remember if we went, what are we going first? Maybe Little Mermaid. I think we did that. And, uh, oh, it's uh, something I learned. So, for whatever reason, my son remembers from maybe a year ago, that playground that's at uh, the Dumbo Ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so he's like, that's all he wanted to do was go play on that little playground at the Dumbo mm-hmm. Ride. So okay. I'm like, okay, we'll just pop over there and go let him play. We'll sit down. He can play. Everybody will be happy. So... You know, we go up there, and I say to the cast member, so what, what's the, you know, how do I do the playground thing? And he's like, well, you, you have to wait in the standby line to, to use a playground. I'm like, seriously? Like, yeah. D- you know, well, you, have- you say that like everybody knows that. Like, you, you sign an agreement <laughs> when you sign up for Disney that you acknowledge <laughs> that fact. Do people know this? Just not me? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the whole reason for it, is so that you can... But I figured not if, wait in line. It's a virtual no, I know, line. I understand that. It's a, it's a. But I figured if people wanted to go, they'd be like, "Oh, sure, just scoot on in there and go play." I mean, because because you can't go past well, that. Well, no, they don't want to do that either because there's a certain number of people they've let in there, so they don't want yeah. everybody just going in there and crowding that up too. But don't they know who I am? I, I'm on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they know that yet. I don't know. It just didn't occur to me. I I don't know why. I just figured like. Not so many did you get in the standby line? No, because it was going to be like oh. a half an hour. Now, now it's getting close to dinner time, oh, okay. and so this is when things started to unravel. So yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it's and it's you know what it, it's it seems like every I got a plan. I got to come up with a different plan. It seems like every time, almost every time we've gone to the Magic Kingdom in the last year, it's the same pattern in that it's overcrowded and everything's okay until dinner time. And mm. because if you have little kids, you know that they have these little timers that go off that makes that turns them from sweet little angels that are having fun at a theme park into these tiny little Tasmanian devils that or at least with my kid that um, that you've got to get to dinner but they don't want to stop for dinner and you know um, it is a it's a challenging situation mm-hmm. so um, that's really the main thing is he doesn't want to stop because he's having fun but you know he hits, he hits uh, he hits a point where really he needs to eat and then uh, turns into to a crazy kid yeah. so now, that, yeah. can, can I can I Offer a bit of advice. <laughs> Please that, do. Cause that is wait, going to be completely no ignored, and I know, I know it's going to be ignored. And I will, I but I'm just going to say it anyway because friends. we're on a podcast, and we're we want our listeners to know <laughs> so, that there are other options. Oh no, I think it's because you want there to be official record that you told me so. And whether I follow, <laughs> well, it could be a little of that too. Okay. So if you wanted to have a nice um, visit to the Magic Kingdom. Before you go into this, by the way, I've known you for over a decade now, uh-huh. and so you're just now giving me this great advice. Oh no, that- I've, no, no, I no. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna say it publicly, but I've said it before many times to you, and you've already <laughs> oh, poo pooed oh, it. And, <laughs> and so, and Whoops. so, I've just given up telling you this to you. But I'm, I'm gonna say it now because okay. we do have <laughs> listeners, and, and me, they might be interested. Let me get my pet. All right. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, so what you could do <laughs> is get there at opening. 
<laughs> I've already See, stopped there listening. There we go. There I've we already go. stopped listening to you. <laughs> if you're going to spout nonsense, well, everybody why, why wake up it? early. <laughs> I waste every time. Get 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 a oh nice little God. breakfast in you. Uh, and get to the park <laughs> before before the it opens, and then Chris, you would you would be able to Glenn, walk to you, whatever attraction you wanted to, <laughs> and you could do all of Fantasyland within two hours. So, so a couple of points. <laughs> See, and that's the, that's the response you, I normally get. So I'm just put, saying, I'm just putting it out well. there for for <laughs> other people who uh, might take a Listen, little advice. You might as well have said, Chris, <laughs> what you should do is sprout wings and then and <laughs> no. flutter around. Flutter around. It's the very possible. Above all, the it's very possible to do. I um, our well, household is not a morning household. You know, well, that's it, a I, that's I, a I personal struggle. choice. Then. So anyway, I. <laughs> I, I struggle to get us out there, um, you know. Uh, when you know, everybody yeah. else goes out there. I'm, I'm however, however, <laughs> I will, I'm will. i going to undermine your advice here uh, with some facts. <laughs> okay. The, the, <laughs> the number one reason we were going out there and going uh-huh. when we were uh-huh. was because, because my son has never seen the castle with the icicles on it. And okay. you can't do that at 8 o'clock in the morning because, I don't know if you know this, it's not dark. That, okay. that early usually they don't have the Christmas lights on so that's why we were timing it so that we could be there in the afternoon and into the evening for that okay yeah and and the thing is you might say well why not just go make a full day of it why not just go out there at eight in the morning and then stay until you know seven or eight uh, because we have an eight month old and that requires all kinds of formula and packing and is the whole loads of work that just wouldn't make that worthwhile. So, oh no, I mean, I, I, you know, it's it's tough for a full day for for us, you know, as well. So I, I, I understand that, and I, and I, you know, um, I didn't realize you you were going to see the lights. Yeah, um, see, Smart but guy. but you can't complain about lines and rides and everything else. Well, but but I can't, and I'm not I'm not so much complaining. It's just a statement of fact. I mean, it'd be like if I said, oh, it was 105 degrees. Well, I'm, I'm not blaming anybody for it being 105 degrees, but it's, you know, it, it'd be it, crazy uncomfortable if that was the case. I, I was surprised because this is not what we've experienced before. But even sure. so, it, it would have been okay if, you know, the, the problem really came, so here's, a, here's what it came down to. So we were heading, um, it, I like Casey's. I, I, mm-hmm. I, we have my wife and I have memories of when we would come for vacation, or even after we lived here, and we we just go we'll just go grab a hot dog and go sit near Main Street and watch the goings on and listen to the guy play piano. I think I've said this before. We we like Casey's, of you course. know. Um, and so it's for whatever reason in my head, I still think that's possible. We'll just go get we'll go get a hot dog at Casey's, and uh, it's never possible anymore. I just don't understand why. It's just it's so crowded all the time. So so the timing was such that. Our kid was being a nut job. We were at Main Street. There was a parade that had just finished. I don't remember which one it was. Um, he was upset because he didn't get to see the whole parade, so he's having a tantrum. And so we're angry, and now it's dinner time, and the parade ends, and I look up, and the line at Casey's was out the damn door. So mm-hmm. again, and so, it, <laughs> and I hate to say this, it was actually a pretty hard time, but we, he was acting like such an insane kid. Um, and we finally said, you know what? We're leaving. No, sorry, <laughs> no Christmas lights for you because you are you are not behaving like a, a fine young man should, and it, so it was partly because of him, also yeah. partly because there was at that point, it was you know after six we we're like we didn't know where we'd go to get any dinner. The crowds were so that there was it just reached that point where everything yeah, said sure. there's no way to salvage this. This is not going to turn into. It. So we just said you know what let's just let's just jump and uh, get into the. Uh, Get into the escape pod and and get off the ship, and so that's yeah. what we did. I felt bad because then afterwards he felt uh, he felt terrible that he uh, he ruined the uh, the ability to see the lights. Um, so it was it was one of those hard parenting moments, but you know, kind of have to that's do okay. it. That's okay. Yeah, so, he, he yeah. needs to learn. Yeah, I know, but it's hard. You know, you want to give it is. Kids, you want to give your kids everything, especially something like that. You like, and because the whole point was he had never seen the lights, so we yeah. To see it, so, and now it's blacked out. You can't go back. Well, well, so or, you might you might say that, but um, <laughs> but now we have another parenting dilemma. So, oh lord, um, it looks like uh, well, the plan right now is I'm going to uh, take off on Friday, and okay. we're going to sneak one more last day in, uh, or at least a few hours anyway, j- mainly just again to go see the lights and. 
Uh, is that the last day of the? Uh, of no, the... Su- I think Sunday is the is the oh, okay. blackout. Okay, but uh, but, but I you'll, go you'll see... have much better time on Friday. I want to go see I want to go see Star Wars, uh, so we're going to do that on Sunday. Right, and uh, yeah, so it was going to be either I took off work, we went on Friday, or we'd go on Sunday. But I figured that that would be the very last day, so it'd be uh, absolutely insane. So yeah, but but this time, you know, we're going to go with it. I've set some fast passes, but mostly we're going to we want to go see the lights, which I think you shared some info with me that it's it's like a little show now, a little frozen mm-hmm. thing, which I, I don't care about that so right. much. But we, you know, he's never seen the lights, um, those kind of lights on there, so. Um, and you know, uh, I guess to be honest, it's, we're trying to get a little bit like something sort of Osborne, like some sort of light extravaganza that we mm-hmm. can, uh, that, so we're going to try and fill that in with that. Cool. So, um, but we're going to be smart this time. I already talked to my wife. We said, well, let's, let's pack some food this time just in yeah, case. Yeah, that's a, basically that's a back, very good idea. Backup food, right? Just cause yeah, uh, absolutely. it's so hard. Yeah. You know, cause the places we like to go and it seems, and I don't know why it is. Maybe you, maybe you have some advice or some, some thoughts. The places that we used to like to go. Mm-hmm. Are now, it's impossible to go. They're just so crowded. <laughs> like, like you turned us on to Columbia Harbor House, and what yeah. used to be great about that place was nobody went there. Right. So, or at least that was my experience. So it'd be nice. Oh, it's kind of empty. We go in, get mm-hmm. a little break from the crowds, and uh, you know, and that place is just as mobbed as any other now. So, yeah, I, yeah, I don't. Um, I, you know, we've we've come to. You really have to eat off hours um, if you go to spend the whole day there. <clears throat> so. What we do is when we go on vacation, we'll eat, um, we'll usually eat early. So we'll eat about uh, 11 o'clock for lunch. Okay. Um, and then that'll put us, you know, about 4, 4.30 or so for uh, for dinner. Um, because it, it, you're right, I don't know what it is, but all of the, all of the restaurants, especially in the Magic Kingdom, yeah. um, Pecos Bill, uh, Columbia Harbor House, Tomorrowland, Te- or Cosmic Rays. Um, they're all at Pinocchio Village House. They're, yep. they're all always packed. Um, th- has there been any like changes in the last few years with like the dining program or the, or anything that would kind of lead well, to that? Well, I mean, yeah, you know, but it, it started, you know, about ten years ago when they started giving the fri- free dining. Um, right. But uh, people have to eat regardless, right? I mean, it, yeah, so sure, whether they can eat it, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just a matter of the parks crowded, and they they haven't built up the. Um, so think about the restaurants that they've added lately. Um, it's it, they've all been, um, you know, uh, full service restaurants. Yeah, the, right. the Beast Castle. Yeah. Um, they just opened the. Uh, what is it? The Jungle, uh, the Jungle Cruise one. Um, where where Adventureland uh, Veranda used to be, oh, the, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's full service. Um, yeah. So so they're adding these full service restaurants, and, and that's wonderful. But because it, it gives, you know, different dining options. Right. But they they haven't added um, uh, any fast food, or, or quick service, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, restaurants to take care of the mass of people that they have. So. Hmm. Um. You know, they even though the crowds have gotten bigger and bigger every year, you still have the same restaurants that are serving quick service meals. Hmm. And yeah, you know, they there's additional capacity with the table service restaurants, but the turnover is you know much lower. So it's not like you're really taking that many people out of the population that needs to eat. Yeah. So I don't know. It's but my beloved Casey's so sad. Yeah, I never, get, I never get to enjoy it anymore. It just seems well, like and it's it, okay. especially on being on Main Street, like you said, if a if right. a parade just finished, right. then right. you know it's like, okay, what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to yep. eat. Oh, hey, there's food right here. Exactly. Oh, so, kind of food. Yeah. 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 So it, so I, I mean um, so that I think that's great that you're going on Friday. I think you'll have a much better time. Um, uh, I you know uh, I I think you know I. Seeing the lights in the Magic Kingdom, are, it, it is magical. You know, it, it's mm-hmm. it's it's awesome. It's uh, you know, especially with the void of uh, nothing at Hollywood Studios anymore. Right. Well, right. light wise. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, now, now this I don't know if it's going to change anything. This is uh, this is a Mickey's very merry Christmas party mm-hmm. night. So I don't know if that means it's going to be more crowded or less crowded prior to that. But so just is, to give you a heads up. People yeah. who do have those tickets can start entering the Magic Kingdom at four o'clock. 
Yep. Yeah, I know. That's so it's like the crush period where you have all the people that aren't going yeah. that are there. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So I mean, the only thing I would suggest is getting there before four o'clock. Yeah. No, we're we're going to try and go out like one or two, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah, I think I, I think if you get out there that time and um. Now, you do know they light the castle before that show. I mean, as it gets dark, the castle just comes on, right? I mean, they don't wait for that show to... Oh, no, I thought they, that was the big signaling of the, of the lighting. No, they... Because they run the show twice, right? For right, they, but they turn the lights off, and then oh, they do, do the show, and it's like, oh, okay. woo But it's like, well, okay, but I just saw it. It was just on, so I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Don't you try to fool me, Disney. Right. So as it gets darker, <laughs> you'll be able to see the lights. Uh, so okay. you don't have right. to wait for that if you don't want, you know. Yeah, cool. Okay, yeah, and uh, thanks for helping me out with that because it, it looked. I was trying to see. I really wanted to make sure that they they still had those lights on for mm-hmm. non uh, uh, Christmas party it, yeah. um, viewing. It almost because uh, you look at the website, it, it almost looks like it says that that is a feature of the of the party, and that mm. uh, and I started to get sad that you would not be able to see that unless you paid the no. uh, large sum of money for that. No, it's it's like they want to scare people into. Uh buying a hard ticket for a, another event. Do you think it was intentional or is it just a, Absolutely. a slip up of Of, of course it's language? intentional. Oh, really? No. Huh. Yeah, well, those marketing people. So, yeah, I can't wait to see it. I haven't actually, I can't remember, I don't think we were there last year, so I don't think I've seen it in a few years. Because mm. we used to always go to Osborne and spend our kind of yeah. pre, pre-Christmas time. Because we had sort of self-imposed blackout periods before we would just stop going right, a sure. few days before Christmas. But, yeah. It used to be before it was frozen, it was um, the fairy godmother from Cinderella oh, would light right. it. Right, 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 right. Okay, yeah. I remember that now. Yeah. yeah. But now it's frozen because everything's frozen. Right. Yeah. Because it's the greatest yep. movie ever. <laughs> I saw a billboard the other day. There's, a, there's a, I think it's a huge permanent one that's down uh, off of, uh, I don't know where it is, um, Lake is somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, it was that one, you know, um, you know, uh, frozen new frozen attraction at Epcot. It just oh, me so great. it's just so wrong that like it just it just didn't uh, you know for all the reasons that is wrong. It just uh, reminded me how wrong that was. Yeah. Frozen attraction at Epcot, but uh, which I still haven't seen. You haven't seen that, right? That wasn't open when you were no. Uh, it was it? not. It was not. No. Will you next time you you go? Will you? Uh, well, not sure. next time. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, no, not next time, but <laughs> right. the next time I go with my family, I will. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Yeah, I want to see what it is. I want to see yeah. what they did. Even though I've seen the video, you know. Right. I and so see that, it in person. So similar question. Next time you go with your family, are you going to get a cabana at the Magic Kingdom? Um, I don't know. I, I haven't seen the cabanas, but I, I know somebody <laughs> who has actually seen the cabanas and been in them. Yeah. Well, kind of. Yeah, I put a foot in in one of them. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that was that was probably the most interesting time of our visit at the Magic Kingdom, <laughs> mostly because I I got to send you pictures as we were there to, to needle you because yes, I think you've said it before. Thank you. that for some reason, you don't like those, or I don't know. I was unclear of your position, but I think <laughs> I think you generally were against them. Um, but yeah, you, th- when did, you think you know, you're so funny. I, I had you to really report do. it. I feel like I have a job now. I have to report in. I'm like man on the street. I gotta. You go. are. That is the, absolutely. <laughs> I gotta go, go uh, experience and report in. So yeah, we went over there uh, mainly because I was. I mean, I was really curious about how, like, just what the, because I saw that. Yeah, I've seen the pictures too, but it's kind of hard to get a sense of, you know, how secluded are they, and like, what does it really look like once you're there, and it just they they seemed like awfully ugly. Uh, and just sort of, you know, place there. So I had to go over there and then, you know, send you some pictures. So yeah. so a couple of thoughts. Can I share my thoughts about them? Or are you sure. Just gonna, no, absolutely. Are you, you going to get so angry about this through the whole thing? No, or, and then I'm going to clarify my position one more time. <laughs> oh, God, please don't. Everybody just turn this off. So, um, yeah, something like you don't like other people to be happy. or so, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> and um, not, oh, get, I'm pretty sure ahead. that's what it was. Go ahead. I don't, no, oh, no, what no, point? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I was wrong. It was, I don't like change. I think that's what it amounted to. Oh, my was God. That it? it just made, oh, my, you. <laughs> <laughs> please, please make your points, Chris. I cannot wait to just hear them. Don't change anything, Disney. No, I, I have never, ever, ever said that. Okay. So, yeah, so we walked over there. Obviously, it's over by Tomorrowland. And I don't know what I expected to see because I don't, I don't know that little corner that well. I know you do because it's your beloved corner. But, um. You should put up a sign with like your name, like your name over there. 
You know how you have like adopt a highway? You can like ad- adopt a corner of the park mm. somehow. And um, I have a brick. Hmm? I have a brick. Yeah, everybody has a brick. No, well, I have a brick at Disneyland too. Oh, that's Do you? Right. I don't know. I don't. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. You you win. Do you have uh, a picture I, on your on but, a tombstone? But I have a hundred. Oh my God! No, I'm not the. I do. I'm not an animal. Oh well. So, uh, is that really a picture? It's not really a picture. It's it like is. somebody. It's like somebody spilt some acid no, on a metal plate and. Not at all. Know. It's it's a perfect picture of me <laughs> in in the year 1999. Yeah, with your awesome goatee. With my uh, awesome goatee. <laughs> anyway, so you know we're walking over there and. They are, and I'm almost afraid to say anything because no matter what I say, you know, you're going to roll your eyes. Just go and, ahead. Get angry. Just go ahead. But I, but I expected them to be to look worse than they did, and I don't know if they put up more because the only pictures I've seen were like of the cabanas with the small potted ferns in front of them, right? But what they had up, at least when we went, I, I don't know if they were at it, but like almost these big hedge things. They're like in these planters that are probably three feet off the ground, and then these these uh, you know the top of them is three feet off the ground, and then. They're three feet tall. Chris, speak English. So these planters are like three feet tall, and then they have these larger, like, uh, oh gosh, I'm, I'm not an, uh, an arborist. Uh, the uh, uh, I don't know some other hedge kind of thing. So you, yeah, you, basically right. the top of the hedge then becomes um, I don't know five five feet high, six feet high, something like that. Probably six feet. So as you're walking towards them, if you're back like towards the uh, uh, you know the line for Wedway, which by the way it was so crowded. The line for Wedway, for the people mover, Glenn, wrapped mm-hmm. around four times and then went out beyond, where would I say it went? Mm, that people would know. It basically, it basically went so far back that the back of that line merged with the back of Space Mountain. Like, they, they, that's how far back for the people mover. Wow. That's, that's how credible. That's serious. But... The people mover is the greatest attraction. Oh, of ever. course, but so. but nobody used to ride it. It was a, I don't know. Anyway, so so back then, so so as we're walking the, these hedges, so they're pretty high. Now the only design problem is that the uh, the cabanas still go higher. So you're just seeing like the top ten percent of these cabanas, mm-hmm. so you see, like the peak of them, and you see the lights that are inside them, but you don't see the structure. So it almost looks worse in in hiding them because they didn't completely hide them. Mm-hmm. Like it, it almost would have been better as you could have seen them completely or hide them completely, but just having that little sliver at the top made it seem like oh you're trying to hide something and you know uh, it didn't quite do it. Yeah, does that make sense? Like yeah, they, they didn't yes, and that's part of my complaint. But go ahead. Okay, oh, all right. Um, so anyway, walked over there and I didn't know like how close we'd get to see them because I I think we read that there's like a cast member station there or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, I saw no cast member that was uh, officially um, uh, near them and. I also didn't understand that the that uh, well, how many total are there at the Magic Kingdom? I thought there was like eight. That's what I think I remember seeing, but I only saw four. So I don't know where the other four would be. Hmm. But anyway, there were there were two that were like right there, on stage, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, behind these magical hedges, uh, and then but then a little farther back, like another twenty thirty feet back, down some stairs were another two that we saw. Now maybe they, we didn't go the down those stairs maybe maybe the other four went beyond that i don't know um and so and i think you noted as well that those aren't so bad because they're so much more secluded because they're back down those those steps Mm -hmm. and they're kind of much they're like back more behind the the building where the uh uh, skyway used to be you know a part of right so they're 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 certainly way way more back uh behind um so i was surprised there was no cast member there um but I was most surprised that it didn't seem that any of the cabanas were rented, which what? shocked me. Yeah, that none of them. You know how they have little, little placards down at the, the foot yeah. uh, with people's names on them? No, there, there were no names on them. There was no, uh, there was nobody in any of them. Um, so, wow. we, you know, we just kind of messed around for a little bit, uh, sent you some. And nobody some, came. Some I, I figured you went up to a cast member and said, hey, look, no. I just want to. And they probably said, oh, okay, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. We have this one of, uh, you know, that nobody's in if you would like right. to see, you know, nope. trying to sell you on it or anything like that. Nothing. Nobody approached So us. you just walked nobody up. That is insane. Yeah, we just walked. We could have we could have just sat down. Right. <laughs> Squatted. <laughs> hey, Enjoyed. yeah, get oh, me I out. Thought, I thought, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I wish we had now. That would have been fun. <laughs> like, well, like, um. Anyway, 
So, uh, you know, I'm, uh, and I know you're going to get angry with me, but I, I'm so of mixed feelings of this now. Because inside, you're right, there, it's still that tent thing. Mm-hmm. But they've done an okay job in making them kind of nice inside. They have, you know, they, they, I don't know. I, I'm kind of split on it. I, I think it's, a, again, if they were if they were like those other ones that were more secluded and further back, if I couldn't see the tops of those two from the other park, then I probably would have zero problem with it all. Uh, and if I understood that this is temporary, that they're working their way towards some sort of permanent structure or something. But, uh, yeah, it looked nice. I think if I were paying that money, though, I'd want it air-conditioned. So I don't know if that's yeah. part of, you know, I mean, if, they, if they moved to, in Florida. if they moved to, you think? If they moved to <laughs> more permanent structure that they somehow have them air-conditioned. Um, because it almost seems like you could build like a, a permanent building that you could just sort of yes. look like they'd be enclosed, like an actual right. door. You go right. in and it's like a little, uh, kind of like a lounge area at an airport, right? That, that's yes. kind of what I, I didn't really think of that before, but that's kind of how I think of those is like, like you're waiting for your flight at the airport and if you're a frequent flyer on United or whatever, that they, they have their um, their lounges that you can, you know, it's nicer than just sitting out in the regular terminals. Yes. You might have some amenities like, you know, free sodas and whatever. That's kind of what it strikes me as, is a little sort of just respite from the noise and the mayhem just to kind of collect yourself. And we <laughs> we certainly could have used it uh, uh, that night. So, yeah. And eh, anyway. So so yeah. just to clarify one more time. <laughs> and I actually t- I actually texted you this, while, you know, yeah. whenever. But uh, my statement on this is I have no problem with them if they build, if they build something that is out of the way and it's – or – well, and or it's themed uh, either to the land it's in or um, or it has to be completely hidden right. behind the scenes um, right. and it's air conditioned and uh, then I have no problem with it. Make it yeah. look part of the the park. Yeah. Um, it sounds it, like there, there's other, sorry to cut you off, there, there's other areas in, more so in other parks I think, Um that have little theaters in them, like you would never know they're there. Like mm-hmm. in the studios, there's one over by, well, it used to be anyway. I'm not sure if it's still going to be there. <laughs> uh, the Avenue of the Americas, like back yeah. behind that. Um, what would you say? I said, yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah, so it's like that theater there. I've been to a couple events in that. In Epcot, there's a, a big meeting space right behind uh, Spaceship Earth, but it just blends in. Like it doesn't sure. stand out. It's like they, that's the kind of tack they need to take with them, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so I have, I don't have a problem with them. I, I you know, they, they want to offer something to people who, who, who want this amenity. That's, that's awesome. But don't do it the way you're doing it now. Um, it's, it's drawing attention to it, but not in the good way. Right. Um, so that's, that's my frustration. Uh, and, and, you know, you showed me, uh, through the pictures, the, the ones that were further back. And that's where I thought all of them were. Oh, I had really? no idea that there were two. Oh, oh no! They're in they're front right. of that. I mean, they're almost bumping in us to, <laughs> to to the rides next to them. Right, and, and that so that made me yeah. like I, I said, you know, that was making my blood boil because I didn't even realize yeah. they were, those two were there. Oh, um, okay. So it's that that part is even worse than I imagined. But um, I figured yeah, they welcome. were in the back, you know, uh, in the, down those little stairs, um, and they, you know, and then you can hide them a lot better. Right. Right, but oh my God, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So almost like what they need to do is build build a structure that goes over those steps or something. So like you yeah. get on those steps and like you're, you know what I mean? Like a like a, it's just like you're in another building or something. Well, why can't why can't, semi, why can't you build something it? behind the existing bathroom building right there? Right. right that yeah. that can accommodate all and make it like two stories and make the second story like I don't know you know just make it look Tomorrowlandy. Yeah. And but but the people in there can go up. They can be on a second story. They can look out over Tomorrowland. Right. You know. I mean, make it make yeah, it nice so, for so everybody. Surprising. It's so surprising because as I'm sitting here thinking about it, and I'm sure people love that we we're still harping on these the cabanas, <laughs> but um, bananas for cabanas. <laughs> we just renamed the whole podcast. It's all we're going to talk about. <laughs> um, actually, you know what would be fun is I wonder if we can find. Could we find anybody at Disney that had anything at all to do with these and come talk to us about them? Like, I'd love to have somebody from the inside yeah. talk about what what their, you know, because that's part of the frustration with them is like you don't really know what their, like, do they already have plans for something permanently built or are they trying to see if these are good enough? And mm-hmm. you know, hearing some. So if anybody out there knows of anybody knows of anybody that could come talk to us, come talk to us. Yeah. But um, it, you know, you know, it, it, what I was thinking is they go to such um, to such lengths. They do a pretty good job of anytime there's construction. Mm-hmm. They um, they put up things to make the construction blend in. Like um, 
I don't know what it was, but I was looking like we were in front of the castle and I was looking through the right side of the castle and there's those little shops back there like Sir Mickey's and whatever, um, but a little bit to the right of that. And I don't know if they have something up for uh, shows, lighting or something else, uh, construction, but they have fabric. Mm-hmm. That is up, and but it it is painted or printed mm. to yeah, look right. exactly like the building behind it, right? Right. And so, I mean, if you're going to go to that at that length to to hide construction and things like that, why wouldn't they do at least a little bit better with these cabanas to make them fit in with the environment they're in a little bit? Right. So, but they were cool. I mean, if I had uh, if money weren't an option, um. Like I said, it really it could have actually uh, been a nice thing for us at that point because you know yeah. oh what I noticed is they, they have a little table there and on the mm-hmm. table uh, they have a menu so you mm. can I guess you know go order and they just have it brought to you whatever I'm like yeah. this would be fantastic you know sure <laughs> he said sarcastically no oh, I I nice. uh, oh my god I, I oh, I'm not could even you clarify that. your position one more time no I did I and I, I was <laughs> crystal clear I understand yeah I think I think we're clear. Yeah, but it, but it you know it looked neat. So I don't know. I'm going to leave it as I, this is a you know I'm a, I'm in the software world. I know what beta tests are like and how yeah. rough they can be for for software stuff. I think this is essentially a beta test for this thing. I, I think they could have done a better job fitting in there. I'm frankly surprised that park management because you got to imagine something like this is probably started by marketing or I don't know who would who would run something like this, but probably not park management itself. You know, I mean, operationally. Whoever the people are responsible for having good show out on the uh, mm-hmm. on the stage there, I would have thought they would have said, "No, uh, you know, we can't do that." Uh, but uh, but they have, so you know what I mean? Because this it's, this is more of like a hospitality thing or a marketing thing. Doesn't mm-hmm. feel like a park operation thing. So you think they would, have, hey, we got to go talk to uh, you know to Mary over in park operations, and Mary might have said, uh, "Show me your mock-ups again." And no, we can't have that. You got to do better. But yeah. maybe Mary was on vacation. So, but anyway, go find somebody, Glenn. Let's have somebody come talk to us. Okay. Tell us all about the the, uh, the background. Okay, yeah, do that. So that was it. That was my big visit to the Magic Kingdom. Awesome. Uh, it's so frustrating. I, I'm gonna start keeping score. I think. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, we have a rocky relationship. Me and that part. <laughs> you do. It, it does seem that <laughs> way. smooth. It Be, because you know what it is. You know. You know what. It, every time I go, you know what it reminds me of. Mm. What it feels like. Is, I think. A lot of people have seen the, the like subways in Japan where they have official people <laughs> with, glove, with gloves on that push the, the uh-huh. riders in so they can fit more. That's what it feels like every damn time we go. Is just <laughs> it's like they just should have cut off, you know, half the number of attendees before. Uh, you know, there's just too many people. That's what it all comes down to. Is that every every aspect is there's just too many people in the park. Yes, too many, too many. And and I'll I'll return one more time to my advice. If you, if you, and forget, you know, looking at lights or anything like that. If you wanted to go yeah, and do every attraction in Fantasyland yep. with, with your children, mm-hmm. be there for opening. You don't even have to run. Just walk to, fa- once, once the rope sure. drop, walk to Fantasyland and you will have, you will be able to see everything. Uh, we, one time we rode Little Mermaid, I think four times and, and then we just kept going. On yep. other rides, you know, because the kids just wanted to. I'm like, yeah, let's do it, because nobody is there. The park starts fill. It opens at nine. The park starts filling up at around eleven. And so for those first two hours, even though there's still a lot of people there, it's it's way more manageable. It's generally cooler. Um, it, it, it's first thing in the morning, so you're not tired. Yeah. And so it's it's a much better experience. It, Listen, it just spend I, two hours there and then leave, and I, you will have a spectacular time. As general advice goes, I think it's fantastic. I absolutely agree with you. There were, I, you know, there were times, especially when we stayed at the contemporary stuff, we we would do just that: we'd get up early and go out there, and totally understand. As specific advice for the gray household, though, yeah, it's probably not going to pay off too much. So but if we'll you, see, but, we'll I'm not saying doing it every week. Uh, what I'm saying uh, is once know, a year. I know. I know. Uh, Plan, get to bed at at six o'clock the night before. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's ways to do it, and, and yeah, sure. you know, maybe just wait till Ryan's a little bit older. Yeah, but uh, it's definitely worth it. Listen, but you you should me know you should know me well enough by now to <laughs> I, know that. that <laughs> wait, wait, hang on. No, you don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> that 
while that's a completely sensible solution to this, <laughs> uh-huh. that's not what I want. What I want is the world to change to be what <laughs> I want. It, what I, I want the world to bend yeah, buddy, to my guess needs. what? <laughs> <laughs> I want, see, because I want to go have dinner there. I want to be in the evening. I, I want know, to see that shift. I, I love that. I love that of shift. Of course. From, so from does everybody else. And that's why all 100,000 people are there at that time. Get them the hell out. That's my, that's <laughs> my time. So. But in the morning, yeah. you see the park waking up. It's it's nice. There's some dew on everything still. <laughs> some dew. <laughs> it's nice, man. Uh, okay. They Speaking put that, on a dude, little show at the at the uh, train uh, station. Go ahead. No, no, I'm not bringing up some other time. Yeah, uh, we'll try it out. I'll uh, I'll mention your advice to uh, the other <laughs> members of my household, and I'll let you know how that goes. All right. Well, never mind. That's out the window then. <laughs> I hear you, but right okay. now it's about. But right now it's about seeing the Christmas lights in the castle. I know, so I know, that'll have to I know, and that's that's wonderful. And so I, I I hope that this Friday you have a much better experience than you did Saturday. We'll see. Well, it'll be another segment, another show. From Chris I can't wait. Well, that's awesome. Boop, doop, boop, doop, boop, doop, boop, boop. One less topic I have to come up with. Yeah. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I should do with these cabanas if we go again? Like, uh, I don't think I can get. I don't think I can get my family to get. Like they were kind of irritated with me. That I had to go investigate these cabanas. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they know you have a new job and that you that this is part of it and yeah. and, and mm-hmm. that you have to investigate things? It is silly. Like now I go to the part line. Now I have like a mission. I'm like, well, wait, what do I need right. to do? Well, you I look at like it a, a little differently, don't you? I got I got a little beat I got to report on. So, right. Since you refuse to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, if only I could get a job in Orlando. <laughs> what else are we talking about? What'd you do? Did you go anywhere? What did I do this weekend? I played uh, handyman uh, around the neighborhood. The I replaced compound. I replaced a a light in my house. I replaced a light, like the uh, actual light. The light fixture. <laughs> I was um, going to say, if your handyman level is you replaced a light bulb, then... <laughs> no, 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 a light I'm fixture. Okay. Um, I don't know if you remember, but in, in my office here, there was a chandelier. Yeah, oh yeah. I was uh, very impressed by it. It was very ritzy. Yeah, and so I, um, I, I mean, I it wasn't my speed, but, I, you know, it's been there. Um but it provided light, so it, we let it well, stay. Well, but the thing is, <laughs> it did provide light, but it, it's mm. the old, you know, chandelier bulbs, and they yeah. get hot, and this yeah, yeah. this oh, room yeah. is hot generally. And yeah. um, so I actually went to Lowe's and got just a, one of those, you know, plain dome-looking mm-hmm. lights. And uh, so I actually took the chandelier down, put that up, and wow. with a couple of CFL bulbs in them. So it's a lot cooler, but I can still have light. So Wow, good for you. Yeah. And energy efficient, good for the environment. And energy efficient. And oh, so uh, my mom at her house, her she has fluorescent lights in her kitchen, and mm-hmm. one of them went out. Mm-hmm. And so I went and replaced that. And I went to my grandma. Oh, oh, and I also put up the Christmas lights at her house. And I went to my grandmother's and down the street <laughs> and put up the, she has this uh, joy Sign. It's you know three separate letters, J O Y, and yeah. so you have to hammer it. But you know, so I put that up, and then I don't know. I did. Uh, Look at you earning points with the family. Yeah, nice. yeah. Right. Oh, and I had to help uh, both of them with the computer issues. So yeah. that was worse than putting lights up. Oh, hey, how's the update on your grandmother with the iPad Pro? How's that going? Um, what's nice is that I actually, uh, others are trying to help her as well because oh, they have yeah. iPads and so it's not just me that's shouldering yeah. the, however, she was thrilled with, um, the gift that no, she that's got. Not, no, that's not what I'm asking. Well, no, 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 no. Believe me. Because when I showed up with that, she was like, oh, I can type now. Cause <laughs> Real she, she, I yeah. think she felt like she couldn't really type on uh. the. Okay. On the because she was hitting other uh, keys and everything else, sure. she she definitely needs something physical. Yeah. Um, and no, then, I truly I truly wasn't asking for that reason. I'm curious, like no, I'm no, really curious I know. about the whole post PC world that they claim iPads will be. So I'm curious what uh, it's what it's definitely to taking people when you you do that. It's definitely taking a lot longer than I thought. Because uh, if you hand one to a child, I, I think it's just intuitive. It's like okay, you figure out okay, if you do this. 
then it works this way, right? Right. The problem is my grandmother's 91 and she has a laptop um, that she's worked on for eight years now. And she knows exactly what to do. She's learned. She's written it down. She's learned. She knows exactly where to go to send an email. Uh, she knows where to go to go to Google to search for things. Uh, she knows where her solitaire game is. Yep. Right. And so this is this is a brand new experience for her. And she's you know like most people, if they are if it's something new to them, they're afraid. Right. And so she's afraid of the, you know, she's going to mess something up on the screen. And, and so, and, and also this introduces um, text messaging, uh, right, mm-hmm. you know, through iMessage. And uh, she, that's a whole different kind. She's like, well, what's the difference between an email and a, and a message? And it's like, oh, well, you know, if you <laughs> have to stop and think about it, it's like, right. oh, well, <laughs> gee. Well, no, see, in a text message, you can type messages to people. Oh, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) And and so, you know, you try to tell, well, it's more immediate. It shows up immediately on their phone or, you know, and so they can write back immediately. And yeah, but she's like, you know, I think she thinks the same thing with email. As soon as she sends it, somebody is reading it, which is not always the case. Yeah. Yeah, people um, at work think the same thing when they send me email. It's crazy, it's cr- right? <laughs> <laughs> All that means is you know how to send an email. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, a little side note. I love when people like, hey, did you see that email I sent? Uh, when did you send it? Like two minutes ago. Right, right. Yeah, well, why? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think you understand the concept else. of email. <laughs> right. Anyway, well, that's interesting with your grandma. You know, it, it, I didn't learn until, gosh, it wasn't that actually that long ago. Um sad to say, is that, you know, there's almost like two different kind of ways people deal with technology. Some people that are into it, like you and me and probably mm-hmm. a bunch of other people listen to the show. Yeah. Um, you kind of, you, you know the concepts of what you're doing, so you can be right. more adaptable. But I'd say probably most people in the world deal with technology in, I know when I press this button and do this mm-hmm. thing, this other thing happens. And so they, they, mem- they memorize the steps of it. Like somebody showed them the steps once and they remember the steps. And then if you rock their world with that, you change the steps up, then it, then uh, it's really hard for them to adapt because then they yes. have to learn new steps because they can't just adapt and say, oh, well, I know I need to send something, so I'm looking for a send button. The button might be in a different place. Right. might have a different icon on it, but I can figure that out. But most most people are not like that with technology. They, they learn their steps, and that's what they that's what they keep to. Yes. Hmm. Well, good for you for, for helping her out. I hope it works out. Yeah, I hope so, too. I, I think she'll uh, love it. Um, yeah. I, I really do. When she gets used to it, she's she's yeah. gonna absolutely love it. Yeah, um, it's I a agree. big, beautiful screen. Um, she could take it anywhere. You know, she was the laptop's not exactly portable, right? Even though it is, but for yeah. a yeah elderly not like lady, a, not like an iPad Pro, yeah, for sure. Right. I, well, it's still it's still. No, I wasn't know. being sarcastic. Oh, okay. I mean, because it's, <laughs> it's, it's a big, it's uh, it's a big yeah, but it's iPad. Still more, yeah, but it's still more portable. But it's than absolutely than a laptop. Most right. laptops, right? So she can walk around, you know, she can, uh, she has a, you know, like one of those swings, like a glider out uh, on uh-huh. her porch or yep. carport. And uh, she sits out there all day reading the newspaper and stuff. She can read the newspaper on the iPad, um, mm-hmm. the full newspaper, like, in oh, a, yeah. you know. Um, like an actual typeset kind of PDF? Yeah, kind of like it's, it's yeah. a PDF of, newspa- of, of our newspaper. The, the okay. greatest newspaper in New Orleans, the Times Picayune. Um, Are there and um, well, there's a Baton Rouge paper that the, they they sell some papers here. But okay. I don't know. Yeah, it's nothing like a nice homegrown newspaper that's made and printed right there at home. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, so she can read the newspaper, and and so she's excited about that. And, and yeah. uh, she can turn the page by just flipping it, right? You know, like, so cool. that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Very good. So anyway, so yeah, she's she's uh, learning. It's it's going to take a little bit longer than I expected. I, and I was getting frustrated. Um, and yeah. So that's why it's good that there are others that that can help me and you know and and her in in learning this because every almost everybody else you know has an iPhone or or an iPad and yep. so they're familiar with iOS so right uh, they can help out. Yep. Good. As much as I, I get frustrated with the uh, how restrictive iOS is, that is the great thing about it is that, that everybody has basically the same experience and knows the yeah. same things. So, all right. right. Good for you. <laughs> Good grandson helping around. Yes. All right. What's next? Spin the wheel. 
<laughs> okay, so we've uh, we've received a couple emails um, uh, the last few weeks, and I think we're going to answer one of them this week. So, okay. well, I'm exhausted from talking, so take it away. So this comes from Sean. And he asks, um, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing, uh, but basically his question is, actually, I am going to read <laughs> the email just so we can get started. So That's a long email. I know, I, I know. I'll, I'll yeah. paraphrase. Okay. So Sean writes, um, do you think Disney has lost any or many of its engineers involved in the development and design of Disney projects, both in the parks and movies it makes? Um, he he was a frequent visitor to uh, Disney World to the theme park um, in the uh, early to mid 2000s. He loved it. He would go, um, uh, I think, multiple times a year. They would go for a long time. They would rent a house. Uh, they also stayed in in um, hotels on Disney property. Um, and basically, what he's getting at is uh, he, he's he's seen the quality in both the theme park and the uh, I think he's also saying the movies has declined over the years um, and he, he's just wondering is there anything contributing to that so as far as Imagineers go the Imagineers are there. there's about a thousand Imagineers according to the Imagineer book that, that came out a few years ago um, but they also hire additional Imagineers depending on what projects they, they have. And then when those projects are over, they do have layoffs. Um, they, most recently in August of this year, uh, they had some layoffs because uh, uh, the Shanghai Disneyland opened and um, it, they didn't need those Imagineers anymore. So, um, but. But they also are hiring as well, depending on what projects they have. Uh, as we know, they're, they, um, they're you know, wrapping up the building phase of, of Avatar at uh, Animal Kingdom. They're starting work at Hollywood Studios. Uh, before Avatar, they built New Fantasyland and Magic Kingdom. And, um, and now at Disney World, at least, they are, they're, you know, starting down the road, we believe, of uh, a transformation for Epcot. So everything goes in cycles, and the Imagineers are the ones who who uh, think up everything, they plan everything, they design everything, um, and then they see it through the, the construction. Uh, but once it's up and running, the Imagineers are pretty much out of it. Um, there, there's a handoff to operations, and operations takes it over from that point. Um so I don't. I'm not sure that it's the Imagineers that are the that that's contributing to a, 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 a problem in quality at the parks uh, as far as maintenance and cleanliness and show. Uh, that that's operations and from reading news stories, you know, throughout the years, Disney tries to be as efficient as possible with um with everything obviously they try to save expenses and and yeah the, you can see that in uh, the you know it's it's well documented that they have um like an entertainment they uh they change entertainment they they uh they have the reputation of even if a entertainment like um off kilter in canada is one i can think of offhand that uh, had a huge following, but I think they just became too expensive. And so they they let them go and then they replaced them with somebody cheaper. Um, so they're continually doing that. But uh, on the operation side, yeah, they're, they, they do, uh, they have had a reduction in operation staff, uh, but, but it goes in waves too. It, I mean, it gets to a point where they know, okay, the, the cleanliness of the parks or the the maintenance of the parks, you know, too many uh, figures are out on It's a Small World or, or something like that. Uh, they realize, okay, we can't go, we need some more people, and so they'll hire people back, and then the quality in the parks gets a little bit better, and then they say, okay, we don't need this many people. And so it, it always goes through cycles. It always has. Um, so I think 
you know, the quality at... Uh, I, I haven't really experienced... Um, you know, I, I think... I think it's it's more of a general, you know, what this almost what this whole podcast is about is us discussing what's different now than it used to be, right? I mean, that's kind of what we've been talking about a lot um, throughout all of these podcasts that we've done is um, what, why, you know, what it's it's a different feeling, right? Yeah, it's it's more about profit and. And, and more about being a business than in the past. It was it was about treating your guests well. That was the top priority, right? So can, can I interject right there? Because it, yes, it's actually, and I'll ask you to forget the cabanas for a second as we have this conversation. Yeah, sure. Because it's actually been a, a topic I've long wondered is does uh, and, and I watch it with you know uh, with people like Sean that that they that they weren't Disney fans, they go for a while and then become disillusioned, uh, think, you know, uh, stating basically quality's gone down and it's not worth the money. I always wonder, though, is that is that a um, – because you get used to the quality and so, like, the little the little things start to irritate you more. Like, like in my line of work, I, I um, had the benefit of staying in some really nice hotels because, you know, we're in the hospitality industry. So, you know, once you start staying at some really nice hotels around the world, you know, a five-star hotel becomes kind of, you know, an average – it becomes your baseline, right? It becomes your right. your expected sort of uh, average for that. And so, like, oh, my gosh, there's lint on the carpet at this five-star hotel. The quality just, you know, it's all gone to hell. Um, so I just I, – I personally have trouble wondering, like, how much of that is just subjective interpretation based on our memories of how good it used to be versus an actual objective – uh, no, the quality is actually not uh, not what it used to be. Because as outsiders, we we don't really have that kind of data. All we really have to go on is our sort of empirical experiences, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and so that's why it's you know I'm trying to answer this, and it's tough for me, simply because I'm now a visitor, right? I for the last decade almost, I've I've been a visitor. I have I, I used to go every weekend and and yeah I, things little you're right absolutely little things would annoy me um, just uh, the way they you know load the trams or something something stupid you know that day would would tick me off and be like oh this is ridiculous um, now I go with a, di- a much different eye but because I'm I'm not going that often anymore and and so when I go, I think I do. I only see the good thing. You know, I only it's Disney World, right? I'm not I'm not right. looking at the chip paint on the railing. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm not picking up things like that. Um, so I think it is a matter of perspective, right? On who how, you know, what what is it to you that that turns you off or turns you on, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. So so it's 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 kind of tough to I, I know what I know what Sean's getting at, but um, I don't know that we can answer it, and I don't think there's anything um, concrete that we can point to data wise because we simply don't have that. Right. Um, we know anecdotally through you know through either personal associations or things people post online that it seems right. like it, staffing wise they've certainly made a change. Uh, maybe not in Imagineers exactly, but um, in, in maintenance crews and, right. and teams like that, right? Right. But, but you know, if you, you know, to the bigger point, if you look at, and, and we've, uh, I know we've discussed this uh, privately, but um, if you look at, simply look at the numbers, the financials for the Walt Disney Company, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, since Bob Iger has taken over, the Walt Disney Company has been very successful. Um, they have grown revenue and grown uh, net income uh, year after year after year. Um, the, the, just uh, the year ending, the fiscal year ending 2016 in October, um, they, they year over year, they went up 5% just for the parks, went up 5% in revenue and 9% in income. Uh, which is, you know, that's we're talking billions of dollars, right? Sure. Yeah. So, so we're not talking chump change, and so that's just for the parks department. They they also, you know, they have uh, the studios, they have um, uh, consumer products, they have, and they have TV, and um, all of them are turning profit, uh, you know, with a great margin. 
And so if you look just at the numbers, they should do absolutely nothing different at Disney because they're doing whatever they're doing. It's working. Right. Um, same for the movies. You know, the, the Walt Disney Company is the the largest and most profitable entertainment company in the world. Um, you know, look at the movies they put out. Um, they, they're continually number one. Last year they had, you know, now that they have own Star Wars, last year, you know, <laughs> that was the biggest movie. Um, but they also have Pixar, which pops out, you know, Finding Dory and... Uh, <clears throat> You know, Inside Out and, and and all these other spectacular movies, or well, all these movies that make a lot of money. Whether they whether you enjoy them or not, that's a different question. Because Frozen is not my favorite Disney anime movie, but obviously, a lot a lot of people like it because or have at least seen it or paid to see it because it ha, it is one of the highest grossing animated movies of all time. Um, really, if, if not the highest. I, ha- I hadn't heard of it. Is it good? Yeah, exactly. So. So to to say that the quality of Disney's movies has gotten has you know gone downhill, I, I you know subjectively uh, okay you know that you can make that argument, but uh, objectively you can't because they're they're pulling in more money than they ever have. Mm-hmm. So, right. but but that gets to the root of you know what we're doing on this podcast is is uh, you know uh, you know uh, yes. The, the business is doing wonderful. Um, it's making a ton of money, but it's to us, to me, I'm not going to speak for you, Chris, but to me, it seems like Disney uh, has lost or is rapidly losing its uh, whatever soul it had. Um, uh, you know, Disney used to mean something, but now it's it's more and more, it's just becoming a uh, another company. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's Warner Brothers or Universal or whatever, it's just, it's a company. It's not... The place where Uncle Walt took us to, you know, take us to another dimension. Um, so that that's that's my opinion. But Chris, you can certainly um, uh, agree, disagree, or just give your opinion. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's certainly you know all companies go through change, and I I think there is a sort of cyclical um, thing that the companies go through where you know, especially something like Disney or an Apple, where they're they're started by such passionate visionary uh, people. But eventually they get they get sort of um, taken over by operations people. Uh, then uh, at some point in their future, then then somebody that's more visionary and want to really push it forward and make their mark on it, they'll come along. So I, I think there are definitely cycles to these things. Yeah. You know, but but I do sympathize with the you know with with people inside Disney. Is it is hard. I mean, when you ha- when you have record <laughs> number of you know if your if your revenues through the roof and you have record profits and you're like, well. I'm just going to keep doing exactly what we're doing because <laughs> that's you know that's what we're getting, and and it's hard to know. Well, maybe you're you're getting those uh, uh, you're hitting those levels because of of other reasons, you know, that, that right. really don't have to do with what you're doing. It's really hard to separate those those things out. So I mean, I, I can sympathize with that, but it is sure. it is hard. Um, yeah, but I you know I think this is the era that we're in. Um, uh, to to for me to try and put myself in a more positive place with it is is trying to find those things that are. They're still part of that um, that magic uh, from from that era. You know, I'm I'm pleased when they still do things like, uh, uh, you know, uh, paint Carousel of Progress. You know, that that they, I'm, <laughs> right. I'm shocked that they haven't shuttered that. I'm very happy they haven't. Uh, that the People Mover still runs, and you know, there's so there's still things. Um, you know, and it's hard because you know it's so much about Disney and, and the parks is about tradition and about you know wanting to take your kids to experience what you did, and so mm-hmm. change kind of rocks that. You know. Frozen yeah. wasn't Frozen was you know Frozen's a great example. Frozen wasn't part of of our childhood for sure, right? Um, but it will be our kids, right? So they'll yep. you know, and when when they take their kids, they'll probably be upset that the Frozen ride has been taken out to you yeah. know for whatever uh, for whatever new thing they put in. So you know things things do change, but it is it, it does seem like there's a sense of polish that uh, that has come off of it that that I wish they could get back in there, but that that's a really hard thing to 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 keep going and, and to justify because it's expensive right it's it's yeah um you know it, it for me the quasi objective measurement is I look at the lights on Main Street and there was a time where at least you know <laughs> subjectively I can it seems like there was never a light bulb out on any of those lights on any of those buildings. Uh, and it seems that's not always the case anymore. They might have uh, things out from time to time, and that that shows a, a general falling off and, and focus on it. But yeah, I don't know. They're cyclical. Still trying to find the good in it. Um, 
you know <laughs> it's interesting in this one conversation we've we we kind of touched on the fact that you know the quality is not what it used to be uh, but I let off by saying, but the park was so crowded, I, I couldn't even, you know, walk <laughs> yeah, around. Right. So, I mean, you know, so, the, <laughs> so, somebody's enjoying it. The old saying <laughs> of, uh, you know, when you when you find a, a restaurant that you love that, oh, we don't go there. Uh, n- uh, nobody goes there anymore because it's too crowded. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's exactly that. So, who knows? So. I think it was a good. It was a good email. I'm glad. Uh, glad Sean sent it in. Hopefully, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, and and I, w- I, you know, I don't. I don't disagree with Sean. I. I, I think yeah. he's. I think he's touched on something that. Um. That I think that's why we're doing this is to kind of talk through things and, and you know, it, look, not everything in the past was great. Uh, you know, quite honestly, it was. You know, it, not everything was perfect, but sure. um. But it just seemed like there was something behind it like um you know uh, walt walt died and you realize you're going back like 50 years with with that though right i mean no i know i know but i'm what i'm trying to do is establish a timeline walt walt passed away and then the company was really run by people who you know his his staff who he was a leader and so there's there was such a huge void and so these people, the, these guys, they, they would just sit around and say, okay, well, what would Walt do? What would Walt do? And so they would try to run the company um, that way. And, and so in the early 80s, it got to a point where Disney was, you know, they, they spent so much money on Epcot. They, they uh, you know, um, that the whole company was pretty much just invested in Epcot's opening. They, they spent a billion dollars in 80, you know, the early 80, 80, 81, 82, building Epcot, that, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And so at the end of that, it, it, you know, they, they didn't see the revenue that they thought they would, and they they their, uh, you know, movie uh, de, uh, depart, uh, department or part of the company wasn't anything. I mean, it was it was awful. And so it got to a point where it was it was you know going to be bought out by Raiders and and broken up and everything else and and you know Roy Disney stepped in and said hey you know what we got to do something, and he he brought in Michael Eisner and Frank Wells and and Disney was you know at the time they were the underdog right mm-hmm. they were right. they were the scrappy fighters and so Eisner came in and and he was he was a visionary. He yeah. he wasn't Walt by any stretch of the imagination, but he he was a guy who thought differently and said, "Hey, what, what did you know? What can we do to bring that magic back?" And he, for the first ten years he ran the place, he did a great job. Um, but then it got to uh, you know they started having some success, right? Yeah, and um, they had success, but but it wasn't you know what the investors thought it should be. And and Eisner kind of just put it on cruise control after a certain point, and and that's when uh, you know they they started the the campaign to get him out of there, and they brought in Iger, and Iger is a great businessman. Yeah. But since Eisner's been in there, I mean Eisner, Iger has been in there, you know, they the company has has done spectacularly well. Right. Um. But he's running it as a business, and you know, for the old time Disney fans like me, it's a shock. It's a, it's a, it's definitely a change. And you know, I'm trying to see the good in it, and I, I do bring my kids there. I still vacation there. I spend a lot of money with Disney still. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, but you know, it's definitely not the same place it used to be. No. But, but like you said, that's that's the Disney that my kids are growing up with, and sure. that's the Disney that they know, and yeah. and so you know, maybe it's maybe it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the other challenge is though that it's uh it's a bit of a monopoly, right? It it is the only Disney World or Disneyland that uh, you can go to. So right. um, you you know people there's, there's a whole lot of inertia there. People will still go just because uh, regardless of what the specifics of you know whether they're their maintenance and everything is what it used to be or not. They're they're still going to go do that. So, but but I think that's why we it, no matter no matter how big of a Disney fan one is, I think we really mm. want to see Universal do some great yes, things because absolutely. then you know it'll it'll spur Disney to have to up their game too, and that's right. better for all of us. So 
Right, and I, yep. I just spent a week at, in Universal, you know, uh, yep. the, the summer, instead of going to Disney, because we wanted to see what they had, and, and it, it was a lot of fun. It was great. Yep. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. and, and they have up their game, and, and they have new stuff coming with uh, Nintendo Land yep. uh, in, in the next few years, and, and so they're only, they're, they're plowing ahead, man, yep. and, no and Disney, Disney is going to have to step up, mm-hmm. and I'm looking forward to that. Yep, I'm with you. Cool. Well, cool. Good chat. Yes. So now we have uh, picks of the week. Okay. Would you like to go first? Um, it sounds like you have a good one though. Well, so I, maybe you ought to go first because I don't. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's a good one. It's. Uh, all right, I'll go first. I guess. Okay. Uh, it's. Uh, it's intriguing. It's sort of a pre-pick, if you will. It's something I. Uh, I haven't bought yet. I've heard good things about. But specifically about the uh, the reason I want to mention this show is because it's about the visit I last had at the Magic Kingdom. So now that I go and I have uh, I have a little uh, partner that goes with us or a little five year old, um, I occasionally get especially when there's a lot of crowds, I get nervous. Like if we get separated, where is he going to be? And like is he going to get lost? And yeah, how would we meet up with him? Um, and and one thing I don't know what they were called, but one time I remember you came down when your kids were younger and mm-hmm. you guys had put like some little. Um, uh, ID sticker or something like mm-hmm. a temporary, almost like a temporary yeah, tattoo. Ta- was, yeah, is that what it was exactly? Yeah. On, on like their back or something. So yes. they could just kind of point back there and they could be found. Um, so I, I thought that was pretty smart um, because I, uh, I'm not a big fan of like the leashes and things. I mean, kid doesn't run off anyway, but no, it's just, I, I, I worry like the flow of people is just kind of like you know inadvertently kind of uh, push him away from us or something. So I, I've learned of these, and I've got an, uh, a, a different. Um, uh, piece of technology similar to these, but I've heard more and more about these particular ones. These are called uh, tracker. Uh, they're they're Bluetooth um, device tracking things. They're primarily made to you, you put on your keys or in your bag. Uh, you know, if you travel or something. Uh, and what they do is they they have little Bluetooth uh, transceivers in them, and uh, they basically create a a huge worldwide network out of these things. So uh, if other people have these trackers and they can kind of talk to each other, so if, say, you were to leave uh, uh, your keys somewhere and then somebody picked them up, well, as it would move around, it would report to other trackers, hey, this tracker device has been found in this location. And I thought, you know what I should do is get one of these and like put it in his pocket or something, mm-hmm. and then I won't stress so much. So I haven't I haven't heard of anybody doing this, but it seems like this ought to be a a, a good strategy. So it's sort of a, a pre pick. I might I might buy some and actually uh, do that, and then like a uh, you know force them to get lost and see what happens. <laughs> so, so that's yeah. my pick. <laughs> Nothing it's like testing science. on fraud, right? It's for science. <laughs> <laughs> testing on fraud, that's great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, these. I, we I got. I think it was last Christmas. I got a similar one for my wife. I think it's called Tile. Uh, it goes on her keychain. Oh yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, so similar idea. The difference is uh, Tile ha- can only kind of report to your phone. So like, let's say you lost your keys. But mm-hmm. then somebody picked it up to take it to a lost and found or did something else with it. You can't get then get that ongoing update with it. It'll just mm. know like the last place it saw it when it was in range of your phone, uh, yeah. essentially. But these, because they create this sort of ad hoc uh, Bluetooth-based network worldwide, and, and they've sold, uh, what does it say on their website? They've sold over four and a half million of them. So, wow. you know, they have enough penetration with these now out in the world that, you know, if you, if you should lose something like your keys or your child, then you know uh, you presume that uh, you know this little network will kind of pick it up and uh, you know kind of report in. So um, yeah. So anyway, uh, the, their name's a little weird. It's called the Tracker, um, but sometimes Tracker spelled without that last e, so it's like T R A C K R. Mm. It's kind of weird. Um, uh, but they're cool. They're not too much money. I think they're I don't know twenty five bucks for a pair or something like that. Uh, let's see. Let's buy now for for science. <laughs> there you go for the sh- for the show. <laughs> Uh, well, right now for the holidays, I got kind of this uh, special going on. Okay, you can get one for thirty dollars, or buy three, get two free for ninety bucks or something. So, uh, roughly twenty-five, thirty bucks a piece. Um, but they look they look interesting, and, and for that uh, for that need, I think I, I'm thinking it's got to be kind of foolproof, right? I mean, unless he were to fall into water and disable the thing, but uh, mm. you know, because yeah, then you know, if we did get that. separated, <laughs> but if he did get separated. Then uh, you know you immediately pull up on your phone and, and see where in the park um, he might be. So that's my pick, the tracker. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. So that is it for this week. Okay. Good night. Have a good night. 
Thank you for joining us on another episode of Terrific Recordings of Nothing. Follow Chris on Twitter and Instagram at CB Gray and Glenn on Twitter and Instagram at Dizwiz. Follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Tron underscore FM and on Facebook at Terrific Recordings of Nothing. For all things related to the show, including show notes and links to connect with us, visit us at tron.fm. <laughs>